Hey YouTube, how's everybody doing? My name is JC and this is the Cuban Redneck DIY channel where we do cooking and grilling on Tuesdays and DIY stuff on Fridays. If this is your first time here, welcome. I want you to take a quick minute and just think about what good deeds have you done today? Maybe a few, maybe none. If that is the case, please do me a favor, click that subscription button because karma never forgets. With that said, today I want to talk to you about my uh, fault clamping workbench. Uh, I grew up uh, knowing these things or referring to these things as folding workbench or portable workbench. Uh, some people even call it uh, workmate, but uh, workmate is the name or the label uh, of the originator uh, which was made by Black & Decker. Uh, today they make a very similar version to this one uh, for about $40. Uh, I paid very little for this one. I believe it was $17 with one of those coupons. Uh, I know the Harbor Freight coupons are hard to come by nowadays, uh, but they're still available. Uh, I saw one of the DIY magazine the other day. Uh, there's also one in the, I forget what it's called, something, Handyman something. Uh, they have one in there as well. Uh, but with that said, uh, it's still, without a coupon, it's still like 21 and change, $22 at the most. And uh, that makes it one of the cheapest uh, folding, uh, clamping workbenches in the market. Uh, Home Depot has one for about $50. Uh, you can get it in Amazon for about $50. Uh, nevertheless, it is the same, literally the same thing for $20, $30 more. Uh, with that said, uh, this guy doesn't have very good reviews, but as with everything that we do around here, we are going to modify it. Uh, we're going to make it a little bit better. Uh, probably going to bring it up to the standards of those $60, $70 ones without spending the money. So. Let's just stop talking. Let's get this thing done. Okay, we'll start by unboxing. Let's see what's inside the box of this Harbor Freight Foldy Clamping Bench. Let me see, no money, no beer, some poorly written instructions by a Harvard graduate that has never seen one of these things. I don't know what YouTubers get out of unboxing, but it's never done anything for me. Okay, we know what the folding clamping bench is supposed to look like once it's assembled. So let's put it together and see what we come out with. We'll start by anchoring our clamping or vice mechanism to the deck. With that out of the way, we'll move on to the legs. Hmm, problem. Okay, this is modification number one. We're gonna need A additional washers with a hole that is at least 5 16 or about 300 thousandths of an inch. You see, the way they have this, you'll have metal rubbing on metal, and over time, that is just gonna grind itself to death. By inserting a washer between the leg and the vise mechanism, you will not only reduce friction, but the wear on the parts as well. This is a little bit tricky and not a lot of space here to work with, but it's well worth it. With that out of the way, Let's put the stringers in place. I'll tell you one thing, they feel very weak and unable to keep this adjustable clamping bench square. I mean, these pieces are responsible for controlling the side-to-side -side movement and with these huge mounting holes, they just can't. The hell with this, let's go shopping. I took a drive to Home Depot, although I'd rather go to Lowe's, and picked up this 16 by 48 3 quarter inch piece of MDF. I'm also picking up some number nine galvanized tie plates for my stringers. While driving back, I decided to not only add bracing, but extend the deck of my adjustable clamping bench. I feel like these little four and a half inch pieces are a little narrow if you wanted to sand or spray something that was like two, three feet wide. 
I cut one piece the width of the deck and the balance I ripped in two for the stringers. I don't want to lose the functionality of the deck and the peg system, so I need to try and fold all the holes over. This would have been very easy just to mark and drill, but these holes are around 800,000. I don't have any bits that size, and I doubt many people do. So I opted to screw the two pieces together and make a replica using the router table. I'll tell you one thing, this $15 router table is going to be very useful going forward. Alright guys, so we are ready to install our stringers. Uh, we have our plates, uh, which is going to do the two bottom supports. It's going to add a lot of plump and a lot of weight to this unit, make it very rigid. But we have one more uh, issue to address, and that is that the two pivoting points that are here uh, that hold, you know, move the table back and forth, not only are they very small, uh, they have a lot of plate. So what happens is with the additional weight that we added of the uh, table extension, uh, the, the, the back half is sagging. And that's basically because there is no tracking mechanism to keep it coming uh, back and forth. So no problem, God gave us a break so that we can use it. And uh, I have in my junk box a couple of uh, tracks. Uh, this is uh, my buddy James threw away one of those uh, you know, put together a uh, computer desk, and these are the tracks for the, uh, the keyboard tray. So uh, things of that nature, I always take them out, keep them, throw them in the back of the toolbox, because you never know when you're gonna need them. So we need them. Uh, so we're gonna take this thing apart one more time. We're gonna implement some tracking mechanism to make sure that our cables are even with, the, with each other. And then we're gonna come back and do the strings. All right, adding the drawer tracks is pretty straightforward. Simply put the track flush with the edge, mark, drill, and screw it into place. With that out of the way, we can put the deck back together and move on to the stringers. This is also pretty simple. You need to make a notch to clear the rivet that is holding the folding mechanism in place. Pre-mount the plates with about a one inch overhang and that is it. I'm holding the plates to the MDF with one inch 832 bolts, nuts and washers. And I am holding the stringer in place with half inch self toppers, which I pre-drill because I don't trust that tapping mechanism. On the other side, the rivet for the folding mechanism is much lower, so I ended up notching the bottom corner of the stringer on the router table. Okay, and here are a few close-ups of the modifications. Hey guys, how y'all doing? I was gonna take a couple of pictures uh, just to uh, to close the video, but I uh, decided to uh, extend it uh, into a video format and do a walkthrough of all the modifications. So what do I think about this folding, clamping, workbench from Harbor Freight? Well, if I had to buy it again, I would definitely do so. Uh, the unit, it's uh, super solid. Uh, the modifications came out pretty good. Uh, expectations of where above uh, were, were met, if not surpassed. Um, I don't think there are any other, uh, there are many folding clamping workbenches with this much deck. Uh, the unit is super solid. All the complaints and all the negative reviews were addressed. Uh, the only problem with the unit is really uh, the bottom braces. Uh, they are very fancy. The holes are very large, so the unit flexes left to right. Um, 
the, we didn't lose any of the functionality with the pegs because I transferred the holes uh, over to the new piece. In fact, I am going to take it off one more time and I'm gonna make more holes in the back so that I can put, I can clamp uh, larger pieces. Um, what else? Uh, the mechanism came out very nice. Uh, the two pieces came out even after I put the watches on the bottom of, of the OEM piece to match the depth. Uh, so let's go over, aside from the tracks, you know, the tracks are out of the way because they are completely, uh, the, the drawer slides are parallel with the actual mechanism. So whatever didn't fit there before, uh, whatever fit here before, it's the same thing that it's going to fit now. Uh, so let's close it up. and go over some of the modifications. So uh, the bracket, the extender here on the side, I put them, I believe in the instruction set to put them on the inside, but I put them on the outside just so that I can pull them up. I can pull them up and fold it away. Um, it is a little bit heavier and this works in your favor because when you're working, if you push against it, it's just not gonna run away. Um, I'm going to make a bracket to put it up in the wall next to my uh, router table and away so uh, basically it's not taking any floor space in the shop. Uh, as I said, the modifications include the tracks, I had to make a support to make it even. Uh, we have the back strap with the plates, the plates have a uh, 832 one inch punch through with the nut and washer on the back, there's a, there's a uh, split washer for pressure so it doesn't back out. In the front, uh, I have cell toppers. I may uh, change that to uh, rivets. I don't, I'm not gonna be taking it places or anything like that, so rivet may not be necessary. Uh, I am gonna take it apart one more time. I'm gonna try to get a dark gray paint and paint all of this so it looks, uh, you know, it looks cool. So uh, other than that, man, I am very satisfied. I hope that you take something away from this video. My name is JC. This is the Tuna Redneck DIY channel. I look forward to having you as a subscriber and I'll see you on my next video.